Good morning everyone, it's Monday again. Today I'm going to show you how to do um, an icy blue winter card and it's also a, a shaker card and my little penguin and my uh, gift are also um, just kind of floating in there but this morning they're kind of stuck so <laughs> anyway they're supposed to float but um, I want to show you how to make this card. We're going to use this die. Now it uh, was kind of introduced as a, um, a Halloween jar and I um, did some Halloween things with it. I put a skull in it and things like that but it doesn't have to be for Halloween. So I'm going to take this out and we can use I'm, gonna, I'm using blue paper for the background and it is Blind Date by Basil. It's got a texture on it. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, I've got my, I had my card base. There it is. There we go. Card base. And it makes a card that is, let me check on my grid down here, that's 5 by 7. So I think that might be an A7 size. I'm not sure. So I want to make my background a little smaller than that card. Whoops, I measured the envelope. So yeah, we still got five, five by seven. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna cut my blue piece to be four and three fourths by six and three fourths. Okay. So. Let me grab up my cutter and I'm going to do that. So let's go. I have to pull out the extension. So we're going to go six and three fourths by four and three fourths. And put that right there. <laughs> my goodness I'm doing this the hard way aren't I okay See if I cut that right because I might not have. Or, oop, <laughs> I think I took the wrong side off. Well, anyway, we've got that side right. Now I just need to get the four and three fourths side right. Now I can do it. Okay. And normally you want to remember to take these uh, stickers off of the back side of your paper. Sometimes I forget, especially when I'm making a rosette, and then I have to peel it off in pieces. Okay, so that fits on our card. But I'm not ready to put it on there yet, because what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to run it through my snowflake embossing folder. Okay, and I'm going to do it sideways twice. So I've got to use my platform and I have to use all the tabs. Get my plates up here. Okay, and let's run it through. to stand up a little hard. Oh, okay. My fault. Let me start that over. We do not need the top tab. There we go. That'll work now. Okay. And then I'm going to 
turn it around and run the other edge through. Put it in this way. It's one way to do it if your paper is bigger than the embossing folder. Okay. So there we have our um, snowflakes embossed. And I'm going to pull this out of the way. And I have already cut my bell jar and the pedestal. Okay, but I want to run my pedestal through that same folder. So I'm going to pull this back up. And I'm going to place my pedestal inside the folder. And you want to kind of um, direct where you want to place it at so that you have, uh, you know, something that looks nice. Okay, let's try that. Roll it through. Okay, so then we have a lot of texture here. And then I need this um, big kick machine for one more thing. I don't need the platform anymore. But I need to do the clear part of my bell jar. And I'm using plastic packaging to do that with. Let me set this on my lap for just a minute. So I'm going to use plastic packaging to do that with. And this is uh, a package that I saved. And I'm going to cut it, cut a piece out of it to use. And you know you don't want your uh, the, well, you know where it, it folds up, and you just want a flat part for what you're cutting. So cut all the piece, the parts off of it except the flat part. Try to find one that doesn't have scratches on it. Okay, and then I'm just going to set that right over top of there. I'm going to sandwich it between my two plates. Plates get a lot of use, you can see. Back up here and run it through. Okay, should be all done with this big machine now. And so here is my clear part. So let's get rid of this. And let's put, start putting our card together. So the first thing I did is I took some tumbled glass distress ink and I'm going to ink up my applicator. And then I'm going to go over my pedestal. You have to be careful because it's a small piece and you don't want to tear it or crease it or bend it. Okay, so I've got that on there. And then I'm going to also take your bell jar piece, your, your white piece, and go around the edges. The reason we're doing this is because glass is transparent, but it also, it, you have a value change behind it. You have a little darker area behind glass. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of building up the sides to create that dimension. Because um, when you have a dark edge, it folds back. So it curves away from you. 
so that this jar when you ink it on the edges it gives the appearance of going backwards and going into a round cylinder so you no longer have a, a one dimensional sticker shape but you begin to have a three dimensional something that looks real okay but we're not going to stop there and then I'm going to go just tickle it on the inside just so that we don't have a complete stark white right there and then I'm going to come in with faded jeans which is a darker blue and I'm going to add some more realism I'm going to ink the edges and just barely over the edge. I'm not going to cover up all of the tumbled glass that I put on. Now see what a difference that makes? You have you had it begin to, to to start to curve with the tumbled glass but now that you've added the faded jeans then you've added an area where it starts out starts out light here and gets a little darker and then goes darker yet and that really serves to um, create that illusion of curvature and I'm going to do it with this as well just stain to the edges because even though this isn't really curving you don't want it to look like it's a flat sticker on your card either so you want to add just that little extra dimension you could go darker with st stormy sky or blue sapphire but this is plenty dark enough it, it, you know you can do it according to your taste okay so we've got that part done now already that takes on a different dimension doesn't it but now we're going to come over here to our background area and we're going to start with the faded jeans and we're going to cover the entire area we're going to ink it and you will notice that again we're creating dimension because the embossed snowflake part stands up even though I would get ink on the part that isn't standing up it's the part that is gets darker plus the edges get darker so you create your dimension this way this is still a rather flat card but you're creating depth with color okay so that changed that whole appearance didn't it went from this to this okay so now um, let's go back and work with our jar right here so you want to make sure that there's no cat here or scratches or anything you want to make sure that your um, your acetate is clean I'm looking for a baby wipe and not finding one <laughs> so I'm just going to use a piece of paper towel I always use these shop towels that you can get in Walmart auto area or any auto store and you can use them over and over uh, after they dry I use them when I paint to wipe my paint brushes on and they're fabulous and I also use them in my wet palette to hold my paint on I wet them down and then put my paint directly on them and it keeps the paint fresh so I sprayed that with water I'm just going to wipe this off and then I'm going to come back in with another dry towel I cut them all up in pieces and you know I can do go a whole day of painting with just one paper towel by cutting them up like this and then I just kind of unfold them and let them dry overnight and I come back and I use them again okay <coughs> excuse me so now what we're going to do is it's still a little bit wet <laughs> we're going to use some glossy accents because I want to use a clear glue and you could use <coughs> any other kind of glue if you want because they all do dry clear but I'm thinking if I want to end up clear it's good to start out clear so I'm just going to very lightly ink all but one edge I'm going to leave the straight bottom edge free of glue 
Didn't say I was going to ink this edge. I'm putting a glue strip on this edge. Okay, very, very lightly. My pen back in the bottle. Okay, then I'm going to set my acetate jar over top of it. And you want to press down. And your glue will spread a little, so that's why you wanted a very thin line. Okay, and I'm going to give that a minute to catch hold. And I'm going to go back to my background. And I'm going to put some adhesive on it. And then I'm going to glue it to my card. And you want to make sure that your card is upright. And make sure that it's opening from the right edge. And we'll place that on. Then I'm going to take the tumbled glass. I'm going back to my light color. <coughs> and just barely go around the edges. Just barely ink those edges. Just so that you don't have that stark white edge glaring out at you. You've got white, but it's not a contrast. What we call that <coughs> is a value change. And <coughs> I'm so sorry. My throat's not cooperating. But um, this is called a value change. And the rule of thumb is that you don't create more than a two-step value jump between your colors. Now, values are... Um, measured from 1 to 10. Black being 1, white being 10. A 5 would be a medium gray. So, by me going from <coughs> this dark white to this light blue, I'm only doing about a two value step jump because this uh, value of blue comes out to just about an 8. So there's only a, two steps between the 8 and the 10 values. So they meld together. There's not a shock value. They blend nice together. They're pleasing to the eye. If I used faded jeans on that card edge, let me see if I can find just a white piece of paper and demonstrate that. Okay, so here's the Here's the tumbled glass ink. Okay. And now that's a pleasing value change. And here we have darker. So you see where this just your eye just melts from one color to the other. This one you you step, you jump. And what we don't want jump. Um if you know, that creates drama. And sometimes you want drama, so remember that when you want drama. But by using this lighter color, let me bring it in farther, to melt into the white, I could come back with my faded jeans and only go a partial way across. And then I've created another value step. So I've created a step 10 to an 8, and then an 8 to a 6. Two value steps. There are four steps between the white and the faded jeans ink, but there is the tumbled glass in between that acts as a bridge between those two values. And I know that the talk of value is not real familiar to a lot of stampers and paper crafters, but it's a way of life for a painter. And if you uh, have questions or you want to learn more, please email me. I would love to, to help you understand values. But it's very, very important. And that it is the reason why some color combinations work and some don't. So you want to try to remember that. Um, and then if you used um, Stormy Sky or Chip Sapphire, you, you would have like a 5 or 6 value jump. So you don't want to do that. But I could come along and put the chip sapphire up next to the faded jeans and have a two-step value step and it would look all right because you've just got to have those stair steps of color. Okay, so um, that's why I'm using the um, 
tumbled glass because I don't want to have too large of a step because I've got tumbled glass, I've got white, I've got tumbled glass, then I've got this uh, blue background that we started out with, and then I've got the faded jeans. So I've got four steps of values here, and it's all very blendable and very pleasing to the eye. Okay, so we've got that. Now this has had a chance to set up a little bit. So what I'm going to do, oh, I need to do my little stamping. So let me find some white cardstock for that. I don't know why I didn't leave it sitting out here. Hold on. Okay. So I'm going to use the faded jeans for this stamp. And the stamps I'm using are just some, I don't even know where they're from. Um, maybe Hampton Art. Maybe. I'm not sure. If I can find out, I'll put it in on the blog. But, you know, you all have Christmas stamps. You all have little stamps that you can use. You might have even smaller ones than these. So, um, just, you know, I just realized I forgot to do something. I forgot to stamp my sentiment before I glued this. So, I'm going to take it back off. Not cool. But I'm going to do it. Oh, this is my cat. <laughs> One of them. And she likes to be the center of attention. So anyway, I'm going to ink this up with the faded jeans. Can't believe I forgot that. <sighs> okay, and I'm going to stamp it right there. Now I'm going to put try to put this back together again. Okay, here we go. Let's give it a give it a shot. If not, I'll have to start over with a with a new acetate bell jar. <laughs> Let's see if we can fix my mistake. <laughs> and what I was gonna do is open this up a little and pour in the glitter. Okay, that's not looking awful. It'll be okay for our demo for right now, won't it? <laughs> Maybe I can give this card to a family member that I don't like or something. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so there's that. And let's let it set up again a little bit. And while we go ahead and stamp the other two pieces. Now these are a little kind of kind of a little large, but I did kind of like how they looked. But, so if you have a smaller stamp than these, then feel free to use smaller stamps. But my granddaughter absolutely adores penguins, so I thought I would probably give this card to her. So I'm going to stamp the penguin. And I'm going to stamp the package. I'm using my faded jeans. Then I'm going to take my little scissors. These are Fisker scissors. and Or you could use the Tim Holtz scissors. Um, you could use... <coughs> here's a cutter bee pair. That's really nice. So you want to use um, some precision scissors because now you're going to fussy cut these out. And I like to get them out of the larger paper before I really start in on them. And I'm going to do this first one this present first because it's a little easier, has fewer lines to mess up. Yeah, when you um, are deciding on your stamp <coughs> for this part, you might want to get one that's not real intricate and that's easier to cut. Um, or you could use one, if you have the Eclipse stamp to cut, you could use one that uh, you already have. Or, you know, you can use your Cricut or something to cut out a shape and then stamp on it. You know, this part is, is truly up to you. And, okay, now I'm going to go cut out my penguin. And this one is a little bit more precise. But I'm not going to worry about getting it perfect. And if it helps to um, use like, a, like an outline 
of the card around it, you know, that's fine too. You don't have to cut it right up to your stamped line. It's totally up to you, just how precise you want to get with this. Okay, and I'm kind of leaving just a little bit of, of white around his webbed feet. Because I know you don't want to sit here and watch me precision cut this at a snail's pace. Okay, almost done. And I got a little webby part right here that I got to take care of. Okay, good enough. Now you can decorate these if you want to. I have some glitter pens, some gel glitter pens, and uh, so I could put a little glitter here on the package just by outlining it. You don't have to get real involved with that. Maybe outline his coat. Okay, and hat. Put this right on the edge. Okay, so you can do that or not. It's up to you. It int does intensify the color. Okay, so now we're back to this, and I think it's set a little bit, so I'm kind of like taking my finger and my thumb or something in there and just making kind of a an opening right there and I'm going to take my Ranger dry glitter my Distress Stickle Clear Rock Candy dry glitter you can use any glitter that you want to use in here but I'm using this one because it's kind of chunky and you can use um, chunky herb glitter if you if you want to and I'm just putting in a small amount. Actually, that's really too much. So I'm going to pour a little bit back in here. When I was um, doing this card last night, when I was figuring out what I wanted to do, I put about four times more glitter in there than I needed, and I just did it again. So it's really very little glitter. <clears throat> if you get too much, it doesn't want to move around. So then I'm going to put my little pieces in there, and I want to make sure that I put them in the direction I want them to be when I glue it down later. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here. Make sure you do this right side up. And I'm going to turn this over on the back and put my adhesive on. And you want to put a lot of adhesive because you do want this to be very stationary. Okay, try not to pour everything out. All right, let me make sure where I'm at now. Okay, so then you want to, don't adhere this yet, but decide, like, I wanted mine to come down into the white part, but if you don't want to, that's okay, too. But you're going to have to put it, you're going to have to slide this acetate underneath. Okay? So I'm going to put it, mine, eh, right about here. Right there. Okay, so then you want to press that down, and you really need to press hard because you've got that embossing, and you want to make sure that your bell jar is um, hooked onto the embossing parts as well as the flat parts. Now I'm going to kind of come in here. I should be using tweezers instead of scissors, but that was handy. And I'm going to just kind of move them around a little bit. I think I got a piece of glitter somewhere. Okay, so now that's stuck on. Now we're going to come and adhere this down. And you want to make sure that you have a, a lot of adhesive right here on the edge of this top because that's where it's going to stick. And then you want to come down here as well. And it's sticking to me. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit across. Yeah, it gets a little hairy working with the small pieces. 
Now, and I just took a little edge off of there, my corner. So be careful, don't do that. Okay. And then you're going to put it on, and you're going to put it on just over top of that bell jar, sealing in your glitter. Now let me put a little glossy accent on this and get my edge back on there. Repairs, repairs. You know, sometimes my videos are as much about fixing a mistake as they are about doing a technique. I'm going to turn this up so that I can see it real well. So I can get it placed where it's supposed to be. There you go. Never know. <laughs> and that is our bell jar winterly wintery blue Christmas card or holiday card or whatever you celebrate with however you want it to be okay and then shake it around and your glitter shakes and hopefully your little these little guys will shake but if they don't it, you know it's not a, a good great big deal um, because it's they're in there and they're on top you can see they're dimensional and they're not just sitting there like this guy is, is twisted then your recipient knows that it's it's floating in there so um, I hope you like this card and you can uh, open up and then you can stamp whatever sentiment you want to you could stamp the same wishing you magical holidays again or something else or you can write with uh, your tumbled glass um, or your faded jeans distress marker and keep that uh, monochromatic look going that's what this is it's different shades of one color it's monochromatic so I um, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week.